Welcome back everyone to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be looking at adding in interactivity with bar charts with D3. Let's get started. So last time we created up this uh, little bar chart here with some, um, some fake stock data. Again showing here it starts at 2016, goes up to 2001 or tw uh, 2021, yeah 2001 or 2021, sorry. Um, and then we also had, for example, here we had the prices and we had some formatting going on. Uh, now let's go on and um, kind of add in what we'll, let's maybe discuss what we want to do. So first off, whenever we, we want to do some highlighting, okay? So when we come into contact with this um, bar, any of the bars, we want it to highlight to a different color. We're also going to have something where it's going to kind of plump up. It's going to expand a little bit. Um, and then we may also, um, I had some people ask about uh, putting in um, just like something like a stock price or something like that in here, or maybe even putting in date or something down at the bottom for axes. We can do that as well. Um, uh, and then uh, let's go on and uh, maybe do the interactivity first, and then we can always come back uh, to some of the other stuff. So first thing that we want to do is go to our uh, HTML file, and we need to add in um, a highlight class here. So uh, let's do fill, and I'm going to do this pale violet red, so this kind of pinkish color, so that it really, really shows up for us. Um, and then we also have our pre-made um, file that we did from the last video. Okay, if you guys want to uh, see how we made this, you can go on and um, uh, look at that as well. Now we're going to just add in a couple lines of code. Um, and I say a couple lines, it's actually a, qu um, a few lines of code. But what we're going to do first is go on down to this um, this uh, grouping of the select all bar, okay? Because we want to actually put in uh, some functionality in here. So when we grab our data, all right, we have our class, we're going to add in here um, two things. We're going to have on, and so here we're going to do something like uh, mouse over, so then it knows whenever we bring our mouse over the top of something, and then we're going to also have it go on and have a like on mouse, um, let's say on mouse over, okay, is going to be the function that we're going to create, and then we're also going to add in this on uh, mouse out okay and then we'll have the function for this say something like on mouse out uh, and so we need to go on and down here we're going to actually create these um, event handlers uh, here in just a moment so what these technically do um, this uh, we are adding in a listener okay uh, for the event and so the same thing for this one as well so let's go on and actually create up um, a couple other things. So something else maybe that we can add in here is, notice that if I refresh this, again, right now nothing happens because again, it's waiting for these on event. Let me go on and comment these out for a second. And so here we have our thing. Now what I'd like to do is maybe kind of have this like drop down effect. So it's kind of like the screen opening on what uh, on our data set. So then when people reload the page or anything else, it'll look really nice, cool, and neat. So let's go on and add that as well um, down here at the bottom. Oh, I have a couple uh, blips of code in there. Um, and we want this, we're going to put this right underneath bandwidth. And so we're going to say transition here. And this is going to add in a transition effect. Okay, and then we're going to use those ease in characteristics. Um, if you guys remember uh, several videos back, okay, we had had it where we were using the ease in and ease out uh, type functions. And this is the one will be something like D3 uh, ease linear because we want it to come a line. We're going to have it going down. Uh, and then we're going to have the duration in here to be 500 milliseconds. And then we're also going to set up a delay in here. Uh, so we want this to have this as uh, what return I by let's say 50. Now if I go back over here and I rerun this now we get this nice effect right. 
So they look kind of like they're just uh, dropping down from nothing and they just kind of iterate through. It's kind of nice, right? So that's kind of like the opening scene to our, um, our data visualization or our, um, our uh, dashboard or anything else, okay? It kind of gives this nice effect, makes, it gives them expectations. So the next thing that we're going to want to do is go on and actually, um, let's create our uh, mouse, uh, mouse over event handler. Okay, so function, and we called this um, what on mouse over, uh, and it will take a D and an I. So let's go on and do D three dot select this. Okay, because what we're wanting to grab, if we go back up, and I need to turn these on now, is we're grabbing this um, this potential event here, whatever is happening. Okay, and then we're going to be utilizing it there. So this uh, dot attribute, and we want to add in a class here of highlight. And so if you remember, that's what we did here for this highlight here. Okay, so we're putting in, we're adding in that attribute of the class highlight. Then we're also going to want to select this. And then let's see what we want to do here. Let's add in a transition. Okay, um, and this is this is technically this is basically saying I want to add an animation. Um, so I want to add animation here. Okay, so let's add in another duration here, and let's give it again 500 milliseconds. Um, we want an attribute in here of width. So then we need to grab our x scale. Okay, because we need to make sure that we have access to some of the data, so specifically our bandwidth, and then uh, plus five. Okay, so this is going to, we know how wide it is, it's going to plump a little bit whenever we create it. Um, and I, I just, I think it looks really cool. So another thing then, adder, we want our y, and we're going to add in a function here uh, that takes in our data d, and it's going to return in here our, our height, if I can spell that correctly, minus our scaled y. Uh, and then let's add in plus uh, 10. Okay, and this is five pixels and 10 pixels. So it's just gonna be this minor, it's gonna get taller a little bit and it's gonna get wider a little bit. Um, and we should, if I go up here and I comment out this mouse out and I refresh this and I highlight over, whoop, they're kind of, they're going wild, okay? So one thing I know that um, I definitely didn't do something right, okay? My guess is I had a plus sign where I needed a minus sign. Um, but again, it's kind of fun to see this animation. Now we didn't have this mouse out ability yet, okay? So let's go back and let's double check here. Uh, what may have happened? Oh, okay, so right here, I have my scale, oh, not here. Um, let's see, I had, uh, oh, you know what? This is uh, not height here. This is, I did this for the wrong value here. Um, this is for the height value and we'll, we'll fix that here. You know what, let me just change, change this. This is actually supposed to be height in here. If I was paying attention, I would have, I would have known. So here is uh, width, this one is supposed to be height. Okay, so we also need to add in our attribute for y in here. Uh, and that is a function of d uh, where we want to uh, return in y scale d dot value um, minus 10. So now, there we go. So if you notice, I don't, and again, the out isn't working. So when I go inside, they're going to kind of grow just a little bit. Okay, again, refresh. All right, so and again, we can go up as well. So now we need to work on this out. 
So whenever we take the mouse out, it should shrink back down. Okay, so we basically are going to have this um, kind of a bit of a, a reversal in here. So let's create um, a mouse out, okay, uh, event handler. So again, uh, create on mouse uh, out. We want D and an I in here. And again, we are going to D3 dot select this we want an attribute here for class bar d3 dot select in here this and again what we're doing is we're going to have it transition again all right uh and again so uh, we're basically wanting to revert it back so we had uh, duration 500 milliseconds 500 milliseconds, so that it looks like it's growing and contracting. We want to uh, have an attribute in here of width, okay? And that's just basically x scale dot bandwidth, okay? So before we added in five to make it grow, now we are uh, going to basically say revert back to your original size. Then we're going to add that attribute of uh, y in here. Oops, y little bit of cleaning there and we want to again return in here y scale d dot value okay so again this is we're basically returning everything to normal and then we want in here a height value and again let's return that to normal with a function here and we want to return the height uh, minus the y scale um, D dot value. All right, and what did not like? That should be fine. I don't know what it's what it's expecting at the moment. Uh, do I have everything? All right. No. What did not like? All right, let me just read. Redo that. So height. Again, we want a function of D. Whoops, D. Uh, and we want to return in here our height minus Y scale D dot value uh, in that. Oh, you know what? I probably didn't have the comma in there. It's probably my guess. So let's refresh this. Now we should come in. Now when we go out, it should shrink back down. And no, oh, whoops, why not? Did I, ah, okay. So I forgot to uncomment this. All right, let's go back. All right, and now, you know, we may, again, if you notice here, they don't, maybe we want this to be a little bit faster because if I move around really fast, it doesn't really seem to want to catch up. Um, so maybe let's speed up uh, this duration. Let's say 300 milliseconds, so it'll grow really quickly. Where's my other one at? Um, down here at the bottom. There it is. So let's say 300 milliseconds. Hopefully that's... Ooh, that maybe moves a little bit better. That moves too fast, so it kind of makes me anxious. So I'll move it back to probably um, 500. So undo, undo. Yeah. All right. I, I like that still. Okay. So, um, oh, we, all right. You know what? I forgot to add in here our, um, our access label. Um, so let's say that, let's go on back up to the top and we can add in our access label really quickly. Because um, again, people were asking about that. Um, let's see, we want this where? <sighs> Where's my call at? Here, okay, so here we have our access left. 
Um, and so we've already formatted this. So let's go on and add in, um, let's append some text. Okay, and from here we want some attribute and we want to transform. We want to rotate this. And again, this is, this is kind of following uh, one of the other examples that we had had um, previously when we were talking about axes um, and about just being able to transform and rotate our um, axis names and ticks, that type of stuff. So we want uh, the attribute um, Y. Uh, and let's make it at 10. Um, then let's also add in dy. And what do we want in here? Um, minus 5em so that it looks a little bit better. Let's also add in another attribute in here for our text anchor. Here. Um, uh, let's put it, we want it at the top. Let's say we want it at the end then. Uh, and then let's add in a couple more in here. We want our stroke uh, to be black. Uh, and then let's actually put in um, the text itself. I don't know why I put that text. Um, stock price in USD. So if I bring that over, rotate that, and we have our uh, label here now with our stock price in US dollars. And again, we have made this all interactive. And again, we have our title. Um, I think next time we'll probably go on and actually continue on with this. We may add in a tool tip that gives some other information. Maybe it'll highlight what the actual price is, because again, these are just kind of um, arbitrary you can kind of see here that this is this one I know is like 88 so we'll have something pop up for us indicating the actual value but we'll save that for next time if you guys like this please comment subscribe hit that like button and I will see you guys next time bye bye